Howdy ladies and turds. Stu here with another banger. Today we're going to talk about that dirty little secret that's tucked away in your mom's top drawer. I'm talking about Ableton's utility feature. For such a small device with such tiny feet, it actually has a huge personality. So grab your mom and let's begin. So we'll start with the most obvious feature, which is the gain knob or the volume control. Uh, here we can raise or boost, uh, and we can also lower or attenuate the volume here, up to a positive 35 decibels and down to a negative infinite dB. Uh, quick tip, holding shift allows you to fine tune the knob. This works on other knobs too. <laughs> I actually like to control and automate all my volume with the utility function. That way, if in the end I'm mixing in the same project file, I can just control all my volume with Ableton's volume sliders and it won't affect my automation. Over here we have the left and right phase switches as indicated by the Greek letter phi. Wave phase is the offset of a wave from a given point. In a wave, we have positive and negative displacement from the resting position. When two waves cross paths, they either complement each other or cancel each other out, depending on their phase. These effects are called constructive and destructive interference. These switches can be used to flip the phase of the left or right channel, or both channels at the same time. Who wouldn't want two channels at the same time? <laughs> so this function can be utilized to fix phase issues. Here we have the channel mode, or as I like to call it, le channel mode. This can be used to pass only the left or right channel of a signal to the output. If we set it to the left, everything playing solely out of the left speaker now plays out of both speakers, and vice versa if we set it to the right. This is useful if we have a recording only playing out of one speaker and we want the output to be on both speakers. Pressing swap will flip the sounds coming out of the left and right channels. This can be useful when trying to decide whether a given instrument in a stereo ensemble recording is exactly central in the stereo image. If you swap the left and right stereo channels back and forth and the instrument you're concerned with changes its left and right position appreciably when you do this channel swap, then it isn't in the center of the recorded image. This next knob is actually hiding something from us. How could this be? If you right click it, you can switch it to mid side mode. So mono, short for monophonic, is the center information we hear in our speakers, meaning we hear the same sound at the same time and at the same volume from the left and right speakers equally. This is center information, also known as mid. Stereo, short for stereophonic, will have mid information, but it will also have differing information that is unique to the left and right channels. This unique information is called side. So on the stereo width knob, 0% is a fully mono signal, 100% is an unchanged signal, and passing 100% will actually raise the volume of the sides up to a max of 400%, creating a widened stereo panorama. The super secret mid side knob actually cross fades between hearing the fully mono signal at 100M and only hearing the side signals at 100S. The mono button simply enough instantly converts the signal to mono. The bass mono button takes our lower frequencies and converts them to mono. Low frequencies typically sound better in mono and it allows more headroom in the higher frequencies. This is also better for cutting a vinyl record too so the needle doesn't jump around. Let me tell you, when using a needle, you don't want it jumping around. <laughs> the bass mono frequency slider is where we set the frequency for our bass mono button. We can pick anywhere between 50 and 500 hertz and it will set all the frequencies below that setting to mono. Choosing the frequency will depend on multiple factors, but a good place to start would be around 100 hertz. When the bass mono audition button is lit, lit, only the lower frequencies can be heard. We can use this when we need to adjust our bass mono frequency. 
多分<笑> uh, at first glance the balance knob looks like a panning knob but this is actually a stereo balancer and not true panning when we turn the knob to the left it raises the volume of the left channel while lowering the volume of the right channel and vice versa when we turn it to the right a true pan would actually be able to move the entire sound more left or more right in the stereo field but this is still a damn fine tool the mute button stops the signal from passing through the utility and mutes the sound usually we put this at the ass end of a chain but if we wanted to mute a signal and let a delay or reverb tail trail out, trail out, trail out, trail out. we can place the utility before a delay or reverb device and the last stop on our funky wild ride is the dc switch this button filters out DC offsets and frequencies far below the human audible range. FYI, the lowest frequency people can hear is 20 Hz. So DC, or direct current, is 0 Hz and it has no frequency, but it does have amplitude. DC will actually push our waveform outside of the center line of 0 amplitude. Here you can see the blue line wobbles around the center of 0 amplitude while the green line has been forced out of the nest and it wobbles around a center of three amplitude. This can cause distortion, clicks, loss of volume, and sometimes speaker damage. Flipping this button on will safely bring the wave back to the nest to wobble all day around zero amplitude. So that wraps it up for this crazy little effect. If you learned something today, make sure you squish that like button and subscribe for more sweet vids. <laughs> I'm Stu, catch you later. <laughs> okay, I'm fucking done.